Hamstring Length Assessment. The tissues involved in measuring hamstring length are the biceps femoris, semimembranosus, and semitendinosus. These muscles originate on the ischial tuberosity and cross the posterior knee joint. Extending the knee and flexing the hip results in a stretch of these. Example indications for this test are if a patient complains of low back pain, may have poor posture with presence of posterior pelvic tilt, or presents with knee and or hip pathologies. Some contraindications for hamstring length assessment are this method of hamstring length assessment should only be utilized if there is full knee extension of the leg being examined. In an acutely injured patient, pain may limit this test, providing an inaccurate assessment of true hamstring length. Results of the test. Normal hamstring length should allow 80 to 85 degrees of hip flexion when the knee is extended and the lumbar spine is flattened. The hamstrings are considered shortened if a straight leg raise cannot be completed to 80 degrees of hip flexion from the table while the opposite leg remains straight. The psychometrics of the hamstring length assessment is that there is excellent intravirator reliability of greater than 0.97 with a gravity inclinometer. For hip passive range of motion, intertestor reliability is R equals 0.55 and intratestor reliability is R equals 0.75. To show improvement in range of motion, a difference of at least 5 degrees must be observed. The following is a mock interaction, first with the skeleton and then with an example patient. straight and together resting on the table. The clinician stands on the side of the leg to be tested and grasps the patient's ankle with one hand while palpating and monitoring the patient's ASIS. With the patient's knees extended and the ankle slightly plantar flexed to avoid adverse neural tension, the clinician lifts the patient's leg, flexing it at the hip until motion is detected at the ASIS. The angle of hip flexion from the table is measured with the goniometer or inclinometer. The clinician returns the leg to the table and repeats the maneuver from the other side of the table with the opposite leg. While measuring hip flexion with the goniometer, position the fulcrum at the greater trochanter. The movable arm is aligned with the lateral epicondyle of the femur and the stationary arm with the lateral midline of the pelvis. Hi Stephanie, my name is Ross Nelson. I'm going to be your physical therapist today. Yeah, so, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what brings you in today? I just had a lot of pain in my low back and I feel some tightness in the back of my legs. So I'm not really sure what's causing it. But. So I want to do a test today that's going to assess the hamstring length since you were mentioning some tightness behind the legs and that can also be causing some of the pain in your low back. All right, Stephanie, so like I said, I'm going to be assessing your hamstring length. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be feeling for a couple bony landmarks on the hip. And what I want you to do is just relax the leg. I'm going to be moving it. And then also make sure to keep that back um, flat on the table. We don't want any arching of that back. And I'm going to be looking for that as well, okay? Okay, Steph, so I'm going to just be feeling for some bony landmarks, as I mentioned. I'm going to raise you up and then I'm going to grab my goniometer and get a measurement on that, okay? And 70 degrees. All right, Steph, so after measuring both sides, um, they both were about 70 degrees. We'd like to see it more 80 to 85 degrees. That's considered normal, which means that they're a little shorter than we'd like them to be. Uh, that can be addressed in therapy through some stretching, and I think that will help with some of that back pain that you've been complaining about as well. Okay, sounds good. All right.